Hello and welcome everyone to the next episode in our career mode. In this episode we're going to be playing against Crystal Palace next and after that we're going to be playing against Manchester City which is a big game but this game is a league game man, uh, against Crystal Palace. As you can see we are second with a magical zoom in of awesomeness. Uh, Manchester United above us, City, Chelsea and Liverpool below us as well. And this is the lineup for the next game. We're playing Giroud, Bacali and Walker up front. Not my best team, we've got Pogba, Diaby and Kovacic as well, the new signing Kovacic. And to Stegen obviously still in goal because he's still kind of increasing in form. But we're not playing Benteke because of course in the next game after this we will be playing against Manchester City for round 16 of the Capital One Cup. The first round um, of this knockout stage so I want to keep Benteke ready and fit. And um, yeah I'm not going to be able to do that if I do play him in this game. But I may bring him on as a sub later on in perhaps the second half or something. So coming into this game I'm not particularly confident because I don't have my amazing super awesome star team player which is of course Ben Teke and so I'm not looking particularly positive at this, at this game really. Um, we're playing Giroud in front, up front and I know he's a good player I just I prefer Ben Teke so much I mean you don't even have to try really you just give him the ball close your eyes just press all the buttons on your controller Open your eyes and it's and it's three nil and that's basically the kind of ben, the kind of player Benteke is and I'm hopefully gonna pick up I don't know another striker in the next transfer uh, window if we do get enough from some of these tournaments and stuff enough money um, I was looking at maybe um, Lukaku but I think he's still on loan so I don't think we're gonna be able to get him um, we do manage to get a ball in there and if for some reason that header wasn't on target but if it was I'm sure that would have been a goal but that's a shame that we didn't get that goal. And now they're on the break. Looks like he's pretty much through. But then who's this? Diaby coming all the way back from midfield. And just absolutely ripping that guy apart. Taking the ball off him. And stabbing him in the process. So now it's Crystal Palace on the attack. Working it down the wing. Getting a ball in. The ball is cleared but not far. Jedinak or whatever his name is. Gets an amazing shot that beats um, to Stegen, but then to Stegen made an absolutely awesome save just by standing still, which is probably the best save he's ever made. I'm still not particularly happy with to Stegen, but I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt again for like the 13th time because I do think he's got a good potential. And um, I don't know, he's just, I think Chesney uh, performed a lot better for me, but I'm still hopeful, as I say, I'm still going to stay positive about to Stegen. So after defending successfully against Crystal Palace's attack, uh, we managed to get on the counter. This is what you call a counter. They committed all their players forward. We managed to get a ball into Walcott. It's on his weak foot. He didn't manage to get the goal. The save was made. But the amount of times I've seen him finish those on his weak foot. But we do have a corner. Are we going to see a goal? Giroud with the header. The keeper, I don't know what the keeper was doing there. He came out all the way to the halfway line. Not really, but he came out way too far. I guess the ball tempted him a little bit too much. And he just thought, thought that maybe he could get the ball. But Giroud punching him in the face with his hands. And then putting the ball into the back of the net with his head. Which was an excellent goal. We are now one up against Crystal Palace at 45 minutes. And that is the end of the first half. Um, managing to get a goal at 45 minutes right on the halfway mark with Giroud from the uh, header. It's a shame it was another freaking corner that I managed to score. We did get a few decent chances. I remember hitting the bar with um, Bacali, but of course this is the actual goal that separates me and Crystal Palace. A nice little header and, uh, well, it's not nice is it really? I don't like scoring headers because headers are just so OP on this game. I prefer, I much prefer scoring passing goals and maybe some long shots but this is the stats at the half time 51% um, possession and three shots for us uh, all on target which is good good to see hopefully we can keep this up and hopefully get some more goals in the second half Crystal Palace now whipping a ball in and Jedinak manages to pick up the clearance with another amazing long shot this time not getting so close to hit the post but of course he has got an absolutely beast long shot so we kind of want to close him down as quickly as possible we bring on Maichi and Verratti for Pogba and Walcott I'm bringing off Walcott and Pogba because they're some of my best players really uh, Walcott is probably one of my best wingers if not the best and I want him for the next game against Manchester City fit and ready so I decide to bring him off 
on Maichi and also Pogba as well, one of my best centre defensive midfielders. Sanye whipping a ball in to Giroud, Giroud with a diving header, coming close there to another goal from Giroud. And we managed to get a corner, Kovacic whipping the ball into the Marlin and uh, forcing an excellent save from Crystal Palace's goalkeeper there. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but they also bring on Shamak, which is of course a player that used to play for Arsenal as well. So some controversy there, but another corner and the corner is cleared. We don't manage to get a goal from that or even a shot on target. So unfortunately, that is the end of the second half and that is the end of this game. 1-0 to Arsenal against Crystal Palace. Subaru with the gay header from the corner at 45 minutes, which I'm not particularly proud of. I'm not happy with this win, really. Even though it's a win, um, I I wanted to get more goals and more passing goals and not gay, crappy headers and crappy 1-0 wins against teams I should be beating. So, I don't know. Maybe I'm just not used to uh, world class completely at this moment. Definitely not ready to go up to legendary although i don't think i've lost a game yet on world class but this yeah these are the match facts four shots for us on target none for crystal palace we managed to keep them out Matteo kovacic with yeah, an 8.3 rating there which is good to see and um i think based on the match facts we definitely deserve that win i'm just not particularly pleased on how we got that win so after that game we get home it's sunday there's a lovely roast chicken dinner on the table waiting for us we have it and already it's monday the big game on the horizon now it's tuesday the big game is here that was really quick that didn't seem realistic at all and this is a big game for us i mean it's manchester city um they're not above us in the league but they're certainly a much better team they've got much better players and i don't expect to be getting this win but i've tried put my best into this i've kept all my best players fit and ready I think I bring, uh, I think I bring all my best players on pretty much, um, because of course I want to get this win. And I'm going to put everything into this. This is for the Capital One Cup. I do believe this is part of our managerial objectives to win this cup as well. So as I say, we're going to put as much effort in as we can. And um, yeah, I'm not expecting to get this win because obviously it's Manchester City. So this is the lineup for the next game. This is pretty much the best team that I can come up with at the moment. We've got Chamberlain, Benteke and Walker, all my best forwards. Cazola, Pogba and Arteta, um, my best midfielders. And Gibbs, Kashil, Nizuma, Sanye and Tostergan. All my best players. This is the best team I can come up with at the moment. So I'm throwing everything I've got at Manchester City for this game for the Capital One Cup. So basically we're just going to pray, close our eyes, press all the buttons and hopefully get as many goals as possible. So I guess for me this game is going to be a good benchmark. I mean Manchester City are an exceptionally good team compared to us. If we do manage to lose or something then it's going to be a sign that we perhaps out of our depth. And maybe we shouldn't be playing teams again, um, at this level. And maybe we shouldn't be at this point in the Capital One Cup. If we do manage to draw against them or even possibly win against them. Then I think that's going to be a huge confidence boost for me. And it's going to be definitely a positive thing. And it's going to be telling me that I'm I'm at the level that I should be at. So to the highlights now. And Rodwell running down the wing. Sanya battling to try and get the ball back. A ball is whipped in. Guidetti comes out of nowhere. Guidetti, I don't know how you pronounce that name. But that was a ridiculously annoying goal. I mean, he was in bags of space. No one even really challenged him. No one jumped for the header. But it was a good goal, I guess. Let's not. Let's not be negative, that was a nice little goal, a nice ball in from Rodwell, and I'm trying to <laughs> do the Route 1 stuff, but it's not working for me, I can't do it. Um, so yeah, they freaking scored. So it's 1-0 against Arsenal for Manchester City. It's Arsenal's turn to attack now, they're working it down the middle to Walcott, is this going to be a reply to Manchester City, the tramp, the P-roll of a goal, Santi Cazola with a ridiculous finish i can't even believe that went in an absolutely pants goal not my proudest moment but i don't care we are now drawing against manchester city who are a very good team and so that is the end of the first half no more highlights from that first half two goals i think that's pretty good uh, pretty active i guess for the first half making this game a little bit more intense we are level going into the second half hopefully we're going to get some more goals. We're going to see some of the highlights. Here's a shot, which was pants. Um, 
this is Gidetti's goal, Gidetti, I don't know how to pronounce that, get that name, but to, to Sturgeon, I mean, he had, a, he had a job on trying to get to that save, and he didn't manage that, but then the goal from Santi Cazola, and that's the end of the highlights. We're going to have a look at the match facts, as you can see, Manchester City um, in a ridiculous amount of possession, but we do have more shots. And oh my goodness, 62% possession. I don't think I don't think I've seen it that high um, in any career mode matches. But into the second half now and into some of the highlights. So just to emphasise, this is the knockout stages of the Capital One Cup. Any matches we lose will mean that we are out of the cup and coincidentally out of a job as well. So if we lose any games, we will be basically left out in the wilderness, naked, without a job, without any pants. With nothing but a stick to fight off tigers and stuff, unless Pogba scores, which he does! Yes, Pogba managing to save our bacon there. We are not going to be jobless at the end of this game. Hopefully, I mean, anything could happen at this point. But it's looking like we're going to have a job at the end of this game and some pants as well which is uh, it's always a good thing for us and for everyone else around us so we are winning and i decide to bring on some fresh legs miaichi maiichi my i don't know ramsey Verratti, because i want to keep everyone fit and i don't want to lose this game so i did bring on Verratti to hopefully get some defending in the midfield we're approaching the end of the game now we are winning somehow against manchester city in the capital one cup knockout stages if we do win this game then we will be going into the next round however it could all change with one goal one shot one cross one header <laughs> Yes, at this point we were not seeing very many chances from Manchester City. It looked like I just completely shattered their confidence. They couldn't defend. As you can see, Benteke getting a decent chance on goal there. And that is the last shot of the game. As I say, I feel like I just shattered Manchester City's confidence. They didn't feel like they were attacking at all. If ever they'd get the ball, I'd just win it straight back again. And yeah, I just I feel like maybe that goal um, from Santi Cazola... Maybe that just completely annihilated them, I don't know. But we did manage to get that win, which means we are going into the next round. Who are we going to be playing? We're going to have to wait and see. But now, we're going to have a look at some of the match highlights. And when I say highlights, I of course don't mean highlights, I mean the match facts. And as you can see, Pogba with a 7.6 rating there. And we managed to get possession back a little bit in the second half. We still had more shots, a lot more shots, which is very good to see against such a good team. And um, as you can see, we've won against Manchester City now. So the next team we're going to be playing against is Chelsea, by the looks of things, because they have won against Wigan Athletic, I think. Also, Everton are through and QPR. On the other side of the table, though, they've still to play their games. Manchester United and Watford have still got to play each other. The Newcastle v Southampton game has still got to go through as well. Some of the big teams are going to be interesting to see who gets through into the final from their side of the table. So the next game is a Champions Cup game. We are going to be playing against Lius SK. And I've kept my team on from the last game, which is my best team. Uh, I do believe the best players that I've got in those positions. And um, we've kept these on, not because it's going to be a tough match, because as you can see, we are five points clear of anyone else in this group table. And we're pretty much going to be guaranteed a spot in the knockout stages of the Champions Cup. But it's because... In the next couple of games, we're going to be playing against Manchester United, as you can see. The next game is going to be against Southampton, I believe. Um, so, that is a game I'm going to be wanting to rest my team. And then, when the next game after that comes around, which is going to be against Manchester City, my best team should be all be rested and ready to play. And hopefully, we're going to have the best chance at beating them and knocking them off the top spot in the league. Anyway, enough jibber jabber, let's get on with the next game, which is of course against the SSK going with the black and yellow kits to hopefully make us stand out. Because I don't know if you knew this, but yellow is apparently the most noticeable colour. Apparently you notice yellow 1.5 for something seconds longer than, uh, quicker, sorry, than any other colour, which um, I can't remember where I heard this, but let's just pretend that it was a reliable source and that I didn't dream it. 
and that's why I always play with like Arsenal's yellow kit or like Brazil's um, yellow kit as well. I love playing with Brazil um, in online matches and stuff. But anyway, we're gonna get on with some of the highlights now. And Benteke to Ramsey. Ramsey running up the wing. He sees Walcott in the middle. Already we are in their box with a chance. I tried to pass it off to the left winger Bruma there, but I thought maybe it was a foul. But it turns out it was just a good save from the goalkeeper. So right from the beginning, Arsenal showing their determination to score. As we have another shot here. I believe that was Walcott managing to win as a corner. It's now Ramsey on the ball, crossing the ball into Zuma, and Zuma somehow not scoring, denied by the crossbar. Somehow the ball bounced on the line. I have no idea how that happened. And then Walcott with an absolute spoon of a shot. What the heck was that? So at the end of the first half, no goals for Arsenal nor the SSK. I felt like we had some good chances, we just weren't able to put them away. So hopefully if we keep the pace up, we will score in the next half. But we're going to have a look at some of the match facts. At the end of the first half then, the match facts showing that we have had 6 shots, 3 of which were on target, 53% possession and the SSK have had 0 shots. We have managed to keep them out, yes, as well as getting good chances and a lot of shots ourselves and then straight from the kickoff Bruma to Santi Cazola and boom how about that from kickoff how do you feel about that Lee SSK do you feel good about yourselves because you shouldn't you should just roll over and let me freaking score because I've had enough chances and I, it's just getting annoying I've had so many chances and I just want a goal and I want to get this win and just create an even bigger gap between me and the rest of the group in this current table that I'm in. So again we're still getting chances in this game but it just doesn't feel like it's enough to actually score so I decide to bring off a few players. I bring on Oxley, Chamberlain, Giroud and Maichi for Bruma, Walcott and Benteke. I want to keep Benteke on the bench, give him some rest so that in the next game against Manchester United um, he's going to be fit and ready and he's hopefully going to score me like 19 goals or something and yet more chances that don't seem to end up in the back of the net chance after chance in this game which is ridiculous it's the 90th minute now plus one minute of extra time what could possibly happen here dodgy clearance Maichi to Santi Gazzola Santi Gazzola with the turn and straight in the top right hand corner absolutely delicious a slice of chocolate cake for Santi Gazzola Putting us one goal against Lies SK, which means hopefully we're going to get the win, surely we're not going to lose this. Look at the outside curve on that shot, that was absolutely fantastic. And pretty much from the kick we managed to win back possession, which then draws the game to a close. We did manage to get the win against Lies SK. We are now a ridiculous amount of points clear of anyone else in our table there is no need to worry we could probably just lose all the games that are to come in this group stage and we'd probably still get through to the knockout stages we can sit back in our armchair with our slippers on and a cup of hot chocolate and do absolutely nothing and we're still probably gonna get into the knockout stages we could take all our clothes off go to the local supermarket get arrested go to prison for a year and we'd come back and we'd probably still be in the knockout stages. We could even address a homeless man and put a... No, actually, wait, let's, let's not go there. Anyway, that is the end of the game. These are the match facts at the end of the game. They still had no shots on target. We had five out of nine on target. 53% possession again. And Kurt Zuma with the 8.6 rating at the end of the game and that is the end of the last game of this episode in the next episode we're going to be having a big match against the two top people in this league or what i thought was the top two people in this league i've just noticed that i am no longer second for some reason in the league which has greatly upset me i'm going to go and cry into my pillow now but if we do knock Manchester United off that top spot in the next couple of games when we play them, then hopefully we're going to rise and hopefully they're going to fall in their positions in the league table. So as I say, that is the end of this episode. That was the last game. I hope you enjoyed this. Subscribe and all that jazz. And I will see you all in the next week.